So what I propose is that uh, um, we, we, we try uh, uh, first to, to really address the experimental results which have been uh, presented to, to us today. I mean, this is the most important. And uh, so since the, uh, uh, the velocity is a ratio of uh, distance divided by time, and uh, uh, I propose that we first maybe take question about the geodesy, I mean, about if there are questions about the, the distance. Then we will take question about the time, and then maybe after we, we will take question of, uh, about the analysis. And then, <laughs> finally, what I propose is if at the end some people want to make comments or ask questions about, uh, uh, you know, what they have in, in their head about theoretical or whatever, interpretation or the doubts or whatever, of course, they are free to do so. We should keep it at the end. And, uh, and uh, as, as was really written in the, uh, in the previous uh, slide, I mean, this somehow will be an, an internal discussion inside the auditorium because our colleagues w w have decided not to give any, uh, any um, interpretation of the result. So, okay, so maybe Professor Ting, if you want. Uh, by the way, there is uh, this auditorium. Okay, you can use that, but it's very well equipped with uh, uh, um, microphones. You can push on it, and then you have to release afterwards. Uh, I want to congratulate you for this extremely beautiful experiment. I'm very familiar with some of the technologies you use. The experiment <coughs> is very carefully done with systematic error, carefully checked. So to, just to summarize your thing, uh, so obviously, as you have correctly said, other experiments should be done, and you will look at yourself because of tremendous implication. So my first thing is to congratulate you. And it is very difficult for experimentalists to make comment about other people's experiment, because experiment has so many complicated things. Certainly, I am not qualified to comment on your things, but just the impression is it's a extremely well done experiment. So that is my number one. And my number two is I was wondering if Professor Takiki is here, it's because in 1979, he was a person who proposed Grand Sasso, orientated Grand Sasso Hall to, to a CERN, and foresee one day this type of experiment should be done. And that I also want to congratulate him. Uh, I'll finish my comment. Thanks a lot. I think we all share Thank somehow you very your much. congratulations. So first uh, question about position. So Jasper, maybe, uh, okay, so. so um, let, let's assume that you really do have very, very good geodesy on the antenna. Okay, that, that I think has been demonstrated many times by the GPS. Now it's the transfer down underground that you've, you've got. Now, you have very good timing. That looks very, very solid. But if I understand correctly, your cross-checks on the geodesy are basically to have had a team do it twice or something like that and come up with the same number. Now, if you do it twice, you might make the same systematic error twice. I mean, is there a completely independent way, drilling a hole down to the apparatus or, you know, <laughs> doing something totally crazy? Well, look, if, if this is a true measurement, drill a bloody hole, you know. I mean, you know, what's a hole? This is, uh, we're trying to understand something very, very fundamental here. But you need, you need a completely independent method rather than just repeating the same technique. So uh, uh, I agree with you. Uh, in fact, uh, if you want, uh, there are two uh, elements of um, cross-checks in this measurement. The fact that the measurements were taken at the two sides of the tunnel independently, and then when they crossed, they were within a few centimeters. This is the first uh, cross-check. Second cross-check is that uh, all this was already done at the time uh, CNGS was started. And at the end, this new result is within 60 centimeters in agreement with the previous one. So it's within the error of the previous one. It's more precise because we, we wanted to achieve an accuracy better than one meter.
Uh, but it is also in agreement to the previous one uh, within 60 centimeters. Then for what concerns the all, uh, we have been thinking about that. Uh, and for, uh, as, uh, as far as we know, drilling a, a, a hole, uh, like you suggest, can be done uh, uh, with 5% accuracy on its verticality. So if you do it over one kilometer, this will be uh, a large uncertainty, much larger than what I've been uh, quoting uh, before. Other question on geodesy with Tiziano? Uh, in, it's again a little bit trying to understand whether there is any systematics which uh, might be relevant. I'm here. Ah, here. Uh, now, in your paper, you, you, you claim that um, uh, tidal deformations are negligible. And I can possibly assume that this is no other explanation. So I, I, I take it that you probably assume that given that you took data for a continuous period of time, any tidal deformation would average out. Yes. Now, but that does not apply to the fact that you might have been affected, might have been with tidal deformations which were different from the average uh, of zero, which is what, we, and I remember from the campaign we had the year at CERN, in fact, we, we, I think the year there's the intelligentsia about tidal deformation is, is concentrated at CERN. Uh, it was a few ppm effect in terms of the size of uh, LEP, for example. So while it is, okay, still much below the 25 ppm effect which you, you seem to be measuring, I would not consider it negligible necessarily, and probably one should try to make an effort to, to see you, whether, because I've not seen anything to that extent. Can you comment on it? Oh, okay, yes. Uh, actually, I, I should uh, give some more details on how these measurements were taken. In fact, they are not uh, um, measurements which are concentrated in the time, but a campaign like that it lasts uh, at least one week of measurements. So you, uh, you can cross-check the measurements outside the tunnel during uh, one week. And this was done twice, as I mentioned. It was done in 2010, and then it was repeated in uh, June 2011, so in completely different conditions. And the, the two measurements uh, were in, agree at the, in agreement at the centimeter level, as the geodesy people were expecting. So this is the kind of answer I can, uh, I can give you. Well, did you, I think it's worth monitoring uh, this distance as a function of the position of the moon because the crust of the earth is deformed by the moon and could have an effect of the order 10 to the minus 5. It's not a big effect, but I'm surprised that with two geodesic measurements, uh, you assume that to be a correct distance. I think it should be monitored uh, according to the location of the moon. Okay. We, 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 indeed, we took a three, comma, taking also the, the previous, uh, previously existing uh, uh, one. And then uh, you, you, you can see on this kind of plot that I'm showing, uh, this is uh, made on a very long time, and you don't see this kind of effects. Uh, these are high frequency data on the GPS. There are, there, there are points which are computed at the minute level, and then they, in this plot there are points uh, which are at the uh, fraction of the day. And these kind of effects are not really visible uh, by the measurements that we have been, uh, we have been uh, taking. Uh, this is a local measurement. It is not something which is made no, of the baseline of 730 kilometers. The, here you see just the position of the yes. antenna and you see that it doesn't sure. move. No, you are completely is, right. Is you are completely right, but it should be, however, affected by these uh, movements, at least locally. Uh. I, I can relay, because it's something I have to tell yeah. you, we are also in contact with the outside world in yeah. a way. I mean, some journalists are, are, are sending questions to, to Arnaud. And uh, one question which comes uh, from the, us, the, uh, Excuse me, the other yeah. point yeah. is that uh, we take the data over, uh, we took mm. data over three years, so all this should average out mm. because the, the, these tidal movements are uh, cyclic. Yeah. One question from our side is, uh, 
is this kind of measurement, this kind of accuracy of 20, 20 centimeters over 1,000 kilometers, is it something which has been done uh, elsewhere? I mean, uh, is it uh, yeah. is a state of the art or far from the state of the art? Uh, it's, a, it's a common, uh, if you want, it's common practice. And uh, the 20 centimeters are even a kind of bad performance, not related to the external points, <coughs> which are at a centimeter level, but to the fact that we had to bring underground these measurements, and this was done in difficult conditions because uh, we had to do it in the highway, and we couldn't stop the traffic for uh, one week in the highway. So at the end, we negotiated to stop uh, one lane, which is what you see there, uh, one lane in one of the two tunnels. You know that there are two independent tunnels. So the traffic was stopped for one week, and then you had to work the triangulations in this uh, a small space corresponding to one lane. And so this justifies the 20 centimeters in accuracy, but it can be done much better if we stop completely the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's worth doing. Other question on the, on the distance or... or uh... Yes, please. Six years ago, I prepared the paper that explains that velocity greater than speed of light is possible in special relativity. And uh, this paper is in your mail. Please look. <laughs> I think as I said, we can discuss it afterwards. I mean, maybe you just entered into the auditorium. Okay, um, other question? Uh, no, I mean, is it about, uh, uh, or timing now, distance or timing? Please, John. Actually, a question about distance. So did you take into account the rotation of the Earth? Yes, we, we, we performed the calculation and it's a sub-nanosecond uh, level effect. Because if, I, yes. if I'm not mistaken, you know, the Grand Sasser Laboratory moves it slightly further away from yes. the CERN during the rotation. Yes. Yeah, I also got the same estimate. Yeah. Okay. Gigi, uh, sorry, Gigi. You measure your waveform with all the protons. Yes. But then you detect only the central core of the beam. Has yes. this uh, any effect? I mean, is there any correlation? Uh, no, no you, you, you ask a right uh, question. So this is also related to the quality of the beam, uh, of the CNGS beam, because as you say, as you point out, there might be, I don't know, some ELOs, some... Uh, strange effects at the beam level. So, uh, in the construction of the CNGS beam, for reasons of integrity of the target, because the target is subject to a very big thermal shocks when it receives the protons. It was required to uh, steer the proton beam within uh, 500 uh, microns from the center, uh, the theoretical impact point at the center of the target. After this is done much, much better, a factor 10 better. And the RMS, this is shown in this uh, picture, is uh, going from 50 uh, to 90 microns if you consider the horizontal or the vertical uh, uh, dimension. And this has also been checked, checked for what concerns the uh, um, position of the muon centroid in the muon chambers, which reflects what happens at the level of the target. So uh, the beam is also, uh, the transfer line is essentially lossless. So what we measure in the BCT goes really in neutrinos. So by all these uh, elements, we think that there is really no correlation uh, between uh, uh, what happens uh, at the level of the BCT and the finally uh, space correlations uh, with the beam uh, in Gran Sasso. This is just given by the kinematics of the pion decay, by this uh, uh, PT of the pion decay. You know? Uh, just to clarify uh, some statements in this seminar, uh, out of the two variables, distance and time, one is probably dominant in terms of error. My impression is that time is dominant yeah, correct. And uh, uh, another thing is that, you know, a quick estimate in my head is show that 
of the order of 50. You need additional delay, for example, in the certain side of, of the order of 50 nanoseconds to get the result. Is it correct or not? Uh, yes, we have many detail, delays, but not just. No, no, the, I mean un unaccounted delay of, of ah, order. Unaccounted delay. Yes, delay. Of, yes. 50, 60 delay. nanoseconds. Yes, unaccounted or delay. At the level of what, what is the total delay which you have now? What is the accuracy on the delay measure? No, 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 what is the total delay? Uh, the total delay is 60, uh, uh, the, the, the total delay at CERN. Yes. Well, these are uh, large delays in some cases. Uh, I will show you the, the previous picture. Okay, so this is the setup at CERN. So for instance, here you have something like 10 microseconds. So this is what, has, what I showed is measured continuously since July. Uh, uh, increase of systematic error which yes. will explain yes. so you, it seems you, to me that first statement is that time is dominant and second for example if I look at where the time is coming from the delay at CERN should be increased by about yes, 15 that's seconds, correct. which yes. is actually a small number compared yeah. to the total yes, delay that's correct Augusto yeah uh, Dario thank you I am here yes so ba basically when you do a time of flight you have an arrival time and a departure time and I believe you're making a very good job on the arrival time, but the departure time, as far as I understand, has a 10 microsecond uncertainty. Now, with 10,000 10, events or so, the overall uncertainty is, is uh, 10 microseconds divided by square root of 10,000. So uh, indeed. Uh, so, uh, as you mentioned, uh, if you take just the uncertainty on the uh, average time of this distribution, it may match what you were, uh, were quoting. But we are performing this likelihood maximization, which takes into account all the delays, all the details of this distribution, and in particular the fronts, which play a big role in the uh, determination of the statistical uncertainty. So the, this we have been checking also with the Monte Carlo techniques, because we can take uh, this uh, uh, curve, which has been measured at CERN, and we can generate 100 uh, opera experiments, for instance, with the typical statistics that we have been uh, using for this measurement, and we can check the statistical accuracy on the results of these individual simulated uh, experiments. So the fact that you, you perform this likelihood maximization by using all the features of this uh, uh, proton waveform allows you to bring the uh, 